Hello brothers and sisters. This is the second video in a series that breaks down the techniques that cults use to mind control, manipulate, and change people using undue influence and, and just loads and loads of dangerous techniques that I think that people need to be aware of. If you haven't seen the first episode, I suggest you pause this. There's gonna be a link in the description. Go watch that first. This is the second in the series. And this episode is going to focus on changing a person after unfreezing them or breaking them down mentally. If you didn't already know and you're brand new to the channel, I was born and raised as a Jehovah's Witness. Um, I got my mom at a very early age and then I was born into it, didn't really have a choice. And when I escaped about four and a half years ago, God, time flies. Um, I didn't realize it was a cult until afterwards, like most cult members, because you don't know you're in a cult until after. And I didn't realize how destructive and dangerous and scary it was. And that's why I talk about what I do. So that way I can share the information with you and someone who has a lot of experience in it and confirm that these aren't just things that we're making up. They're used everywhere. So after episode one, the process of freezing someone, breaking them down mentally, and then basically foregoing their mental reasoning and letting it go into groupthink mode and letting them rely on leaders we then go into the process of changing a person. All of this information is taken from Combating Cult Mind Control by Stephen Hassan. He's the United States expert on cult mind control psychology. I highly suggest you check his stuff out. Actually, I'm gonna have his book listed in the description below. It's gonna be an Amazon ref link. So yes, that will help me benefit the channel because I'm doing this out of the goodness of my heart and I wanna share this because all of this information mirrors abusive relationships even if you aren't in a cult. Uh, religious technology, political cults, you just be able to see the world in a very different way. Uh, not just black and white, but gray and a whole lot of color. So yeah, if you get that book, it helps support the channel. So once the freezing part is done, actually a lot of techniques from freezing carry over and are, are done over and over again on the member to continue to change them. A new set of behaviors, a new set of thoughts, a new set of emotions are given to the recruit or the new member to fill the void left behind by breaking down the old self. That person before. Indoctrination of a new identity begins a lot of seminars and a lot of rituals. Informally, it's spent by spending a lot of time with other members, reading and listening to audio and video recordings over and over and over again from the cult's literature. I found this part to be really disturbing because I remember it clear as day. You know, Mormons, Jehovah's Witnesses, they do a lot of repetitive things, monotonous things. A lot of things that are just kind of drilled into your skull. And they're getting the members into a rhythm. And that's how material and tasks are handed out to rank and file members to get them to just be so overworked and just focus on the next little tiny task that they're easy to influence and suggest and put under undue influence. If talks are given or someone gets up on the podium and they're preaching, the material will very, very slightly, but the messages are pretty much the same. Like, listen, obey, and be blessed. It's a song from the Jehovah's Witnesses where it's indoctrinating children to just listen, obey the leaders who are under God, and then their lives will be blessed. It's just telling them to give up their, forego their critical thinking and just do what they're told. Jehovah's Witnesses do this with their <sighs> memorials. They do it with their uh, conventions. They're three days and two days and one days. They meet several times a year. Their meetings every week. Um, when CEOs come by, uh, Mormons do it. They have their own terminology. Scientologists do it. Um, a lot of Christian sects and cults. I think most of Christianity, whether people like to admit it or not, is, is just flooded with cultism. Stephen pointed out that recruits are always told that, that the world is bad outside of the cult. And every rank and file regular human being on the outside of that world has no idea how to fix it. Ordinary people outside of the cult lack the understanding that has been provided by the leaders of that particular cult. They're often taught that the leader or the god of this group is the only hope and source for everlasting happiness and answers to the universe. And then recruits are often told that their old self that they gave up was keeping them from experiencing this new full truth. Old concepts that you used to have about yourself, of the world, we're holding you down, that your rational mind is holding you back from fantastic progress. And basically what they're all saying is surrender, let go, have faith. There's actually a Scientology building, a couple of them I think downtown where I live. They tell their members that they must be put under mind control. They just blatantly tell the members to their fucking face, you must be put under mind control of a counselor to show that your mind can be controlled. Now, keeping in mind, like they don't tell this information all to them at once. I remember the Jehovah's Witnesses famously did this was they tell the members only what they are ready to hear at that time. And um, that, that is not exactly something that goes under informed consent. I know that psychologists do that. They have to fully inform you that whatever you say, um, certain pieces of it, uh, certain pieces of it can't be um, said to the public. But you know, if, if a child were to be abused and if that were mentioned in that conversation as a mandatory reporter, they would have to tell you that cults and churches don't abide by the same rules. So back to my point, when growing up as Jehovah's Witnesses, a lot of times I'd hear elders having conversations out in 
service going that's going door to door, knocking on doors and trying to recruit new members, that they needed someone with a clean slate, someone who had no beliefs or they had wiped their previous beliefs off of the radar and they had a clean slate to be built up and molded into the perfect Jehovah's Witness. And that in order to do that, they would fully gain God's love and that person could then begin to have a base knowledge. And when they have that base knowledge, then they can build and understand how loving these new rules and techniques and thought controls were beneficial to them. When really it was just withholding very, very important information where I think if the average everyday human found out about the mass amount of child abuse that goes on in churches and cults, the mass amount of like taking a people a, a advantage of their finances, draining their bank accounts, making them into mental slaves where all they think about is eat, sleep, and do this thing, I think if people knew that ahead of time, they wouldn't get involved. And what happens by doing all this is that your behaviors change subtly at first, then forcefully later on. Sleep deprivation, this one's brought up again. I remember this growing up as a Jehovah's Witness. Um, one of the things that cults are famous for doing is keeping you constantly busy, doing a lot of mindless, busy work. And that comes in the form of, again, listening to audio and video recordings all the time, going to the websites and only looking at their approved material not only their approved material, but chanting and praying and singing and only spending time with other members and always doing something like keeping a certain place clean or focusing only on getting other recruits and just doing tasks for the organization, whether that's, you know, could be bookkeeping or cleaning a place or traveling overseas to do preaching and work where it's, you know, not really known about that cult or religion. It's mindless, busy work always to keep you maybe not necessarily sleep deprived, but ever definitely deprived of thinking anything, any thoughts of your own. And I didn't realize at the time that this gets a person into kind of a hypnotic trance. When they're in that hypnotic space, the person becomes much more likely to be influenced. I've always wondered about this induced spiritual experiences. You know how a lot of times you talk to a religious person and they're like, I don't know how to explain what I just saw. I don't know how to explain what you know the demons that were in my room or when the person said this thing and i didn't realize there was actually a term for it in psychology called induced spiritual experiences they're contrived in an artificial manner so private information is pulled usually from a close buddy of the member and then it's passed along to leadership so it's brought up at a later point or a later time like if there was a death of a loved one or the brother tried to commit suicide or if there's a financial hardship or something crazy, normally happens in a lot of people's lives. It's brought up later, so that way that person thinks it's a spiritual experience and God is speaking to that member through that leader that brings it up later. Super manipulative, a lot of bullshit. And it's pulled up later to create an experience, a spiritual experience. And a lot of cults do this by planting fake phobias in kids' minds when they're raised in it. You can't masturbate, you can't have sex before marriage, you can only marry within the faith of the group. Um, everyone else is, is evil, we're being persecuted. There's all these fake phobias so that way you're constantly anxiety filled and ridden and afraid to take a next step. But by doing that to the member, they also create a box for them so that way they can blackmail them later on. And they're all taught to confess their sins to leaders. So if someone does masturbate or has sex before marriage or has a thought of wanting to watch a movie that may not be appropriate, maybe like an Avengers movie, um, as, as stupid and silly as it sounds, um, the Jehovah's Witnesses de demonize everything outside of Jehovah's Witness material. So I remember like Pokemon cards growing up as a kid, all kinds of shit. You can't play with that, but if you're caught, they use that to blackmail you and further put you in a box and surrender your mental ability to think. And when these experiences happen or some kind of touching life story is brought up by a leader, the member usually begs for forgiveness for not being a better member. Talk about a toxic fucking relationship. Some cults go even farther by paying outside people to have these experiences with members and put fear in them. So one, there was a uh, martial arts cult that was running around for a little while that's mentioned in the book. Pay outside members to do a fake mugging, confronting the people with their inner fears. And then even like if they were sent to a psychologist, they would have the psychologist bring up those inner fears and just put fear in the people and think that they just can't trust the outside world. They need to go back to their abusive leader or husband or whatever the fuck it is. But this creates a belief that the spiritual world is real in that context of whatever religion or cult that is. And that the leaders have tapped into that higher power and you're the only way to get to that God or higher power universe is through that leader. A very common technique by cults, what they have their members do is they ask the members, what does God want from you? puts a lot of pressure. And again, it's, it's victim blaming the other person. What, do, what is God? What can you do for God? What does God want from you? What does God want them to do? They're again um, told to research and pray for God's forgiveness and answers in order to gain God's favor. Most members are also taught this. I remember 
uh, even capturing it on camera when I confronted some Jehovah's Witnesses that I found at a mall. They're taught that joining the group is God's will, but leaving the group is directly against God. And that's why there's um, apostates are famous for this term, uh, apostasy. You know, Muslims have it, Jehovah's Witnesses, uh, Scientologists, Mormons, um, and Seventh-day Adventists. Like, you can all get disfellowshipped or excommunicated and have your whole friends and family turn their backs on you and talk shit about you, which creates a lot of shame and a lot of pressure to come back and submit. Um, but they also say that you're betraying God, so you're also giving up your hope for the new world or the new system or that that blessing, whatever it is. And it is not open for discussion no, either. It's just fucking no. Talking directly to dedicated members that are believing that this is the only way of life and they know what's best for you is a very weird and interesting experience. If you're a new recult, recruit, it's hard to not deny someone's charisma when they truly believe in the bullshit that they're saying versus you know someone who's not sure and has their one foot cold, one foot hot, you're gonna be able to see, well, that person's not sure yet, when really you should be listening to that person, but the person that's fully convinced this is the only way of life should be a lot of red flags. And then that creates a lot of stress on the recruiters to never fuck up and to always recruit and always be in go, go, go mode. And they put these people in these groups that are in recruitment groups, like we would go door to door as Jehovah's Witnesses, Mormons have their missionaries, JWs have that too, so many churches do this. Um, and they, they split off the more dedicated members into these groups and anyone who's asking questions quickly gets put aside and is either snuffed out or isolated from the rest of the group so they can't keep asking questions. I remember growing up, people are put in sharing sessions. I didn't know this was the psychological term for it. You get together and you confess your past sins. Please don't ever fucking do that if you're in a cult or a religion. You share your current successes and the community is then kind of feels like they have a group that they've got together. Confessing your sins is just what they're gonna use as dirt on you. They can and will use it against you. It's, I wish more people knew about that. But doing this to people in these sharing senses that teaches conformity and hate. Number one, conformity because everyone's thinking the same. Hate because um, any sins or past phobias that they put in your mind, everyone hates those things. They think the world is black and white. They don't see the gray and the color on the outside, which is not necessarily wrong either. But they teach to hate that, so they teach intolerance. And all the while, that's teaching to praise group ideas while punishing non-group ideas with cold silence and shunning. That is probably the hardest thing that most people could ever face. That's why most people, I think the number one fear is most people are afraid of talking in public versus being dead. Would rather die and be in the coffin than give a speech in front of a group. But what's really at stake is the approval the person experiences by speaking in front of a group. But really what they're afraid of is the pain of being shunned or saying the wrong thing or looking stupid when they're worried about people's opinions because their parents and society or their cult and religion has done that to them. So after all of this shit, once a person is fully broken down, they have a new punishment and reward system in place in their mind. They fully broken down into the process of changing. They're ready for the next step, which will be the next video. So that's it for this video. This is video number two out of three, and I'm just gonna keep any cult book I can find. I'm gonna tear it apart and eventually review it and go over it on these videos. But I figure a lot of people were not talking about this in depth and the techniques that are used that are really malicious and dangerous from these destructive cults. So. Hopefully it helps out the kid or the adult or the new recruit or someone who's been in there for years to be like, oh yeah, they do this and they say that. That's pretty sus and they could wake the fuck up. If you want to see me post comment almost daily, come and hang out with me on Instagram and TikTok. I post there almost every single day. I'm probably the most active on Instagram. Um, Twitter and Facebook, I'm trying to start post there a little bit more often, but you can come say hello if that's your choice of social media. Good news is that uh, these bands are actually going to be in stock soon. Coronavirus stopped them for a while. From, we got held up on the shipments and I didn't want to push it any further when coronavirus was a big, big thing. But now that the world is kind of coming back and being forced into the economy, we're going to take my very best. I'm going to be working on the website soon to get these back up. Um, I'm only going to be charging a few dollars for them to help support the channel because your freedom is absolutely worth it especially if you're an XJW, and maybe some other religions we'll cover in the future, but if you want one, this is the best way to kind of celebrate what you have become now, and that's a survivor. So, brothers and sisters, I will see you in the next video.